Hello there, everybody. Um, I've just been looking through some of the chats. It's so great. David Lurie, so great to see. Well, I can't see you, but you know, so great you're joining me all the way from Mallorca. Um, I am, for those of you who don't know me that well, I am in Hawaii. That's where I live. Um, that's where I got stuck in COVID. And I know it's a pretty nice place to get stuck. Um, there was a couple questions in the chat. Um, this, for those of you that have any kind of, you know, issues going on in your body, this class is going to be fine for you. Um, really for me, it's the, uh, it's the idea that we are going to get out of our heads and do a lot of rolling around, right? Investigating. We're going to investigate our relationship with our body using the floor as a massage tool using ease right using ease because i think that's what we all need more than anything right now is you know a good half an hour of just easing feeling you know finding our way through joints muscles fascia bone structure all of that it'll be very investigative um oh there's a couple people from the usa yeah, it's always nice to see um and belgium and uh, yes, it's great, awesome. So since we only have um, a half an hour, let's get started. I'm gonna take, it's first thing in the morning for me, so I'm gonna take another little sip of coffee first. Keep me going. And wherever you are, just find a comfortable seat. So don't worry if you're sitting cross-legged, if you're sitting on your shins, um, if you need to have your legs stretched out in front of you for whatever reason, just close your eyes, get comfortable. And yes, Patrick, it will be fine for your back. Notice whatever is touching the floor, whether it's your sit bones, your feet, some part of your thighs. And just notice you're connected to the earth. And when we make that recognition of being connected to the earth, the nervous system starts to switch into that rest, digest and heal mode because it remind, we remind ourselves, I'm safe. There's something beneath me that's holding me. Let the spine just organize itself. So we get that sense of lift through the back without anything getting rigid. Notice where your shoulders are and just see what happens. The awareness, just being aware usually lets us let go of tension. And taking a moment to swallow, soften the jaw and the throat. Notice the forehead and the eyebrows. And then turn your awareness to your breath. Just begin by noticing the sensation of breathing. The breath was already there. So can we notice what it feels like? The slight movement of the rib cage or the deep movement of the rib cage. And then we'll make it a little bit deeper. By using your next exhale, empty all the air out and gently engage around the navel to help you get that sense of squeezing the air out at the end of the exhale. And then a deep, full inhale, breathing into the ribs, into the chest, into the back, and exhaling long, slow, navel gently in, all the air out. And deep, full inhale, thinking three-dimensionally in the rib cage, and long, slow exhale, emptying, emptying completely. Do a couple more rounds like that, just deep, full breath, stimulating that connection between the body and the breath. 
And the, the dialogue with the body begins when we notice how the breath affects the body. And then when you're ready, we'll start with just initial super simple investigation. Just drop your chin down towards your chest and roll the right ear towards the right shoulder. Bring the chin back to the chest and left ear to the left shoulder. And continue from side to side. So just noticing how your neck feels. A few circles with the jaw can allow us to relieve tension in the face and the connection of those muscles into the neck. We can take the head all the way around to the back if that's comfortable. And of course, just turning your chin from side to side a few times. And then let's get into the shoulders. So start with a circular action of the shoulders. And initially just notice how do the arm bones move in the shoulder sockets. And so we're waking up the fluid, not only in the muscle and the connective tissue, but also in the joints by just moving the bones in, in the shoulder socket. And then think about what do I need to do to move my shoulder blades around my back? So the movement of the shoulder blades on the back can start to massage the whole upper back. And then the collarbones have to move in order to get in there as well. So where the whole upper body is getting in on this internal massage. It's like you've got fingers inside waking up everything. And then moving further down the back, we can take full circles with the whole rib cage and the spine. And of course, at any point, if knees are bothering you, extend one leg, extend both legs, just circling around, waking up into the hip sockets, just a little bit. It's just like saying hello. We're just saying hello to the different body parts. And I can circle through the feet, wake up the toes, wiggle the toes. Let's bring, slowly bringing everything back to the starting point. If you can sit with your legs crossed, right foot crossed in front of the left, and take a few breaths there. Just let the body settle back into your seated position once again. And notice, taking a few breaths, what does it feel like to be in this body now? I always remind people, this is where the practice begins. It's in the awareness. It's not in the asana. It's in our awareness of the experience our body is having. Let's open the eyes, interlace the fingers in front of you, push the palms away. Imagine your navel is trying to touch the wall behind you and then rocking from side to side. So the abdominals are engaged and I'm just getting a little bit deeper into the middle and the upper back. So it's like I'm in cat pose, but it's not weight bearing. So I'm only gonna go as deep as my spine is comfortable going. And then bring the hands all the way up, lifting the heels of the hands all the way up to the ceiling. Start to make circles on the ceiling with your hands. And we're kind of anchoring in the pelvis. So once again, we'll engage a little bit through the abdominals and the obliques. But just stimulating a little bit more movement and that deeper connection under the skin, under the armpits, down through the sides of the body. And then reaching all the way up here. And pause for a moment and just notice, can you release your jaw? Can you notice your breath? And these are questions that don't have wrong answers, right? We can't get ourselves wrong. That's it. If you're noticing your own body. You're noticing your own spirit experience. It's right, whatever you experience. And then release the arms. Give them a little shake. And then taking the left hand to the floor and the right arm reaches up and over and I drop this forearm all the way down. I can lift this sit bone a little bit. I don't want too much tension here. 
and then bring it up and then imagine you're hugging a tree, wrapping your arm around a big tree over your left knee. So imagine the tree's growing out of your left knee. We'll go between those two shapes. So we open up nice and wide and then side reach and bring it back up to center and then hug a tree. And then open it wide and side reach. Bring it back up and hug a tree. And then the next time you're over to the side, pause there for a moment. Relax the right arm down as well and free up this right leg. Swing it all the way behind you. And I'm going to roll over so I can lift up into active pigeon. So I'm going to turn to the side now so you can see the side view. Back toes are tucked under. And I'm just negotiating here. I just want to wiggle into my hips. Again, it's not about what the pose looks like. It's not about how far you go. I'm using the movement of the pelvis and the movement that the thigh bones make within the pelvis to just wake up the connections in the hip. And I can get a circular action. It starts to massage in the lower back as well. And if it's the end of the day for you, which it is for some of us, not me though, um, push that right heel away a little bit more and you'll get a little bit more into the hip flexor on the right side. Check in with your jaw. And then just shift your weight over so the right butt cheek comes all the way to the floor. Slide your right arm down. Sorry, it's your left butt cheek and your left arm so that we're just going to flump onto our back. So I'm rolling onto my back here. If you don't have a lot of space, just adjust, wiggle around. <clears throat> Hug the knees into the chest, one hand on each knee, and just start making a nice circular action. Massaging the back of the body. Remember, you can get a rocking from side to side, helps us get into the back of the ribs. Moving the knees around allows the femur bones to massage into the hip sockets. And then keeping a hold of your left knee, extend your right leg away and take both arms out to the side like a T-shape. We're just going to use momentum, drawing this left knee across the body to the right and then opening it back up to the left. And I'm gonna open up as far as it could go comfortably as if I was doing a laying down tree pose, right? And then bring it back up, cross it over, bring it back to neutral, lying down tree. Or shall we say fallen tree? <laughs> and then cross it over into the twist. So we're just gonna let the leg use momentum. And this will really help massage that connection from the outer hip into the lower back. So those of you that are experiencing lower back problems or any kind of back problems, this should feel quite nice, yeah? You just don't go, you don't go into the twist any further than your spine is saying yes. So remember, when we check in with what our body feels like, we always want the answer to be some variation of yes, yes more please, yes but a little less, yeah, we wanna listen to that voice. And then the next time the knee is across the body, pause there. Let's make some circles with the left arm. So there'll be a moment where there's no twist at all. My left hand is reaching to my right hand. And then the left arm over the top of the head, opening it out again. And then the hand, my hand passes the other one. It continues to circle. My head follows. My shoulder blades follow. I let the hips rock. I'm not trying to keep this left knee on the floor. Again, remember, this is just checking in with my body in all the different shapes it can play with. And then the next time that left arm is out to the side, go ahead and continue to roll all the way onto the back. Draw, draw the knees in. This time, hug onto the back of the knees. And let's rock up and down from your sit bones to your shoulders. Just one or two times. And then pause up at the top. Let's see if we can take a little balance here in a variation of Navasana. But if you know me, you know I like to do toddler wobble. So I'm just going to start to play with different movements here. So think of it as Navasana gone wild if you haven't done this with me before. 
And really it's just establishing what muscles can wake up to help support any kind of movement. Sometimes balancing on one butt cheek, then balancing on the other. And then when you're ready, just bring the feet down to the floor, extend through the legs. Hands can be either side of your hips or on your thighs. Take a breath or two there, just noticing. What does it feel like now? Always going back to the awareness. What do my legs feel like? What does my spine feel like? The jaw, the throat. And then as you open the eyes, we can take a little bend in the knees and have your feet a little bit wider than your hips. It's usually easier for most people if we've got more space there. And I'm just gonna start a waving action through the spine here. So I'm kind of flirting with a forward fold. I don't care if I actually get there. Let's just say it's one of those, those flirts that you do just for fun. <laughs> oh, the years have passed since I've done that. <laughs> And then maybe your legs start to straighten a little bit. Maybe your hands start to reach towards your toes, up and over. So these are just su suggestions. As you feel the back line of the body, the posterior chain start to wake up, you might feel like this flirt can go a little bit deeper. And then the next time you're forward, just allow yourself to touch toes, ankle, shins, the floor, and just have a little wiggle here. So I kind of, I like to pedal my feet. You know how often we, you know, we pedal our feet in downward facing dog. I like to pedal them here so that I've got a knee bend and one straighten as I'm moving towards a pause in a forward fold. So I kind of think of it as just like, a, I'm just trying to establish a little bit more of a relationship between the hamstrings and the lower back. And then get to a moment and pause and just close your eyes and breathe. Your knees can be bent, your knees can be straight. You can have your head on the floor or your head way upright. It doesn't matter. What we're looking for is the experience. What does my body feel like now as I deepen my breath? One more, two more, depending on whether you're breathing slowly or quickly. And then bringing the spine up, bend the knees, soles of the feet on the floor, tuck the tailbone under to roll all the way back down, reach the left arm over the top of the head, push with your right foot to roll onto your belly. <clears throat> and we'll find Sphinx pose. So forearms coming down to the floor. <clears throat> Again, I like them a little bit wider than my shoulders. Drag the forearms back so it's like you feel your collarbones want to move forward. <clears throat> and then turn your head from side to side. <clears throat> so the upper back is awake. I want to push down into the tops of my feet a little bit. We just did that sort of unraveling in the, in the back of the body. And now I want to establish a little bit more support. And then bring the head into the center, lift the chest a little bit higher, take a few deeper breaths. I think your collarbones are nice and proud. They're expanded. Back of the neck is still free. And then release that, place the hands next to the rib cage, push up and back. <clears throat> and we'll move into downward facing dog. So as you tuck your toes under, lift the hips up, and have a little pedal through the feet once again. Now we're gonna wake up through the calves, through the ankles, shifting from side to side. You can have your feet wide, you can have them narrow, you can turn your feet. Remember, whatever your body can do, it's useful to explore it. You know the old saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. Well, that's what happens when we get older. We, we limit our range of motion, thinking it's safe, instead of expanding our range of motion. Right? So as long as we're listening to what the body is saying, we can play because the body will tell us, oh, no, not that, not that range of motion. It'll tell us. We can listen. But so often it just says, oh, yeah, that feels good. I haven't done that since I was a kid. Right? And then let's walk the feet closer to the hands. We're going to move to sitting with the left foot crossed in front of the right foot. So however you need to get there, 
Just take a moment. And when you do come to sit in, close the eyes. Take a few breaths. Swallow. Settle. Let the spine settle. Give the body space to just find its way back to stillness. I'm going to turn and face you again. And we'll just go through that whole thing on the other side. So I'm going to let my right arm come down. Remember, my left sit bone can come off the floor. Side reach with the left arm. Come up. And then hugging that tree as if it was growing out of my right knee. Bring it back up through center. And then over to the side. Bring it back upright. And then around. And do that one more time. Just noticing the left side of the waist and the rib cage. And then the next time you're over to the side, just get to lead, keep leaning over to the side so we can free up this left leg to swing it around, tuck the back toes under, lift the hips up. I'm supporting my hand, uh, I'm supporting my hands, I'm supporting myself on my hands. You can always use blocks here, but I'm just, I'm investigating my pigeon. It's an investigative, Pigeon. <laughs> and remember, I'll turn to the side again. If you want to wake up more into the hip flexor, kick through that back heel. Try not to lock the knee out, but kind of pulse into that knee. That'll help wake up, simulate that connection. And now we're rolling onto our back. So rolling over to the side until your right butt cheek hits the floor. And this doesn't have to be graceful. Just slide that right arm down to the floor and roll onto the back, hug the knees into the chest. And once again, we're just circling around, noticing, and maybe making bigger circles with the legs extended. That's another option, since they might be a little bit more awake. And then when you're ready, taking the arms out like a T-shape, this time you're going to keep the left leg extended on the floor and the right knee is going to rock from side to side. So it goes towards the twist and then it opens out to that supine fallen tree. <laughs> and do that a few times, noticing what happens with the relationship of the back of the hips, the lower back, the middle back. It's all connected, right? Nothing in your body is, is a separate entity, thankfully, right? You know how moms used to say, if your head wasn't attached, you'd leave it behind you. Well, thankfully, it's attached. Okay, so next time that knee is going across the body to the left, we're making arm circles with the right arm. And so now it's just the upper body that's rotating, the head and the neck. Of course, you can change direction. I think I forgot to say that on the other side. And then we'll pause in that twist for a moment. And remember, you let that right leg have as much weight as it feels comfortable. Soften into the right shoulder. Notice how the breath can expand into the right side of the rib cage. That kind of offers us a little bit more space to work with. And then return to the back, hugging both knees in, grabbing onto the backs of the thighs, rocking up and down once or twice, depending on if it is a good sensation for you. And then we'll go back to toddler wobble. So the next time I come up, I'm extending the legs, and it's like I'm falling through space. I'm rocking from one butt cheek to the other, just, you know, having a great time. Trying to figure out what body, what muscle groups can, can get involved in this action. And then when you're ready, you come to sit in Dandasana. So feet a little bit wider than your pelvis. Hands wherever they feel supportive to start off with. And we can start with the knees bent. Once again, waving through the spine. So I still want to have some engagement through the front and the back of the body. I'm not just flopping. I'm letting the head and the neck follow. And then you can start to make it bigger if you want to add the movement of the arms. 
Maybe you want to add a bit of twisting. So right arm reaches forward and left arm reaches, reaches forward. Just explore, you know, the different variations of folding forward without making a commitment yet. And then come to a place to pause. And again, I always like to pedal through my feet a few times. Relax through the back of the neck and take a few breaths there. Soften the jaw. Deepen the breath. Always deepen your relationship with your breath in stillness. And then rolling up through the spine when you're ready. Bend the knees, soles of the feet on the floor, rolling all the way back down to the back. Right arm is going to reach up along the side of the head. Right leg straightens. Push with the left leg so that we end up on the belly. This time we're going into a circular cobra. So I'm going to plant my feet on the floor. A little bit of engagement through the hamstrings and the glutes. Hands come wider than my mat at shoulder height. And I imagine I'm dragging them back. Lift the chest and start some circles upright. Now remember, my circles can be quite low. If I've got my glutes engaged just enough to support that connection to the lower back, I shouldn't feel any jamming there. And I'm using my hands, a little push-pull action here to help me navigate through those circles. And then bring it into center. And once again, it does not have to be high. Check in with the neck. If you're really high, make sure you're not pushing away. That really jams up our lower back. But I want to be pulling. I want to pull my hands back so I feel the backs of my arms as well as the upper back work. And take a deep breath in and out. And then lower your forehead to your hands. And let's take a pause here. Breathing into the back of the ribs. Breathing into the back of the chest. Softening in the face, softening in the jaw. And then placing the hands next to the ribs, come up once again to downward facing dog. You get a little wiggle here, a little shifting of weight. And once again, just walk your feet towards your hands. Or if you want to do a fancy jump through, that's also fine. And end up with one foot crossed in front of the other. We'll start with the hands on the knees or the thighs. Close your eyes. And this is that moment to really notice. What's my connection to the earth now? Whatever body part is touching the floor, sit bones, calves, thighs, feet, I'm supported. The ground is still beneath me. We soften in the belly a little bit. Notice that the movement of the breath can be experienced all the way down in the lower belly. And then noticing the spine. Can I allow the spine to find its way? Can I just observe? Let the, let the spine tell me what is upright. Once again, notice the shoulders, the neck and the jaw, the forehead. Recognize that you occupy space internally and externally. And placing one palm over your heart center and the other palm on top. And that sense of being held, 
of holding space for yourself. And remember the last time you hugged somebody that you really loved, or obviously still love. Just let every cell in your body have that memory of that touch, that embrace, that unconditional love. And direct it to yourself. In deep gratitude. This is where the practice begins everybody. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me this morning, this evening. I can't read the text from back there. So um, I hope you have a, a wonderful day, evening, whatever's going on. Um, lovely. Oh, from Argentina, we had Adri from Argentina. Yes. Peace Seeker 049. It is a lovely way to start the day. <sighs> yeah. Thank you, everybody. Did I introduce myself? Ju oh, no, it was on the thing. Julie, I'm like, <laughs> was I supposed to tell anybody who I was? Great. Um, oh, yoga coaching. You know, Emil. Oh, wonderful. And Claudia, welcome. Oh, Sissy. Hi, Sissy. <laughs> so nice to see everybody here. Emmy. And Tara in Ohio. Hi. Oh, I bet you're cold. Um, <laughs> oh, peace. We know you. Okay, good. It's so hard because I can't see your name if you've got. Um... Oh, wonderful, David. Thank you. Have a lovely Mallorcan sunset. Or maybe the sunset's already gone. And Louise Roberts, yes. Wonderful way to finish the day. And Sylvia from Germany. Tia, thank you. Jane, Tara. Yes, Tara. The, well, the, I've got classes on Eckhart as well as you can find me on BurmaniYoga.com. And I also have YouTube. I also have some YouTube classes as well. Yes. In the Netherlands, Jess, you're welcome. Oregon, hi. Toot flute in Oregon. I like that. Toot flute. <laughs> and the, Gracias from Spain, Sally, de nada. But with a name like Sally Harland, I think you're probably British, <laughs> but speak Spanish. And so they, yes. Yeah, the full power moon is going to be out. Um, it's probably already out for you guys. And Maria, thank you. You're welcome. Exactly. <laughs> Sally, I guessed it right. <laughs> Um, from Germany, yes. Good na Abend, good Abend in, in Germany. Um, yes. And Glasgow, I love Scotland. I was married to a Scottish guy for many years. <laughs> and I love Edinburgh and, and Glasgow. I think they're fantastic cities. Okay. So I'm not sure how to see if I need to, um, have to turn my phone back on to see what I'm supposed to do here now. I think I just end the stream. So anybody else from Romania, Anna Maria. Yes, that's Anna Maria is easier to pronounce than the tagline on there. Oh, and Simsa from Switzerland. Awesome. Great. Gosh, I miss traveling. I miss being there in person with everybody, especially all of you that have, you know, been to my workshops in person. So hopefully one day we'll get back to that. But in the meantime, we've got the, the lovely medium of, you know, the internet, which is great. Uzbekistan. Wow. Love it. Never been there. I think I have to visit now. <laughs> yeah. You have Vienna. Oh, yes. I used to go to Vienna regularly. <laughs> and Alina. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So I think the next class, um, 
you know, the YouTube class is Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, but do check the Eckhart Yoga um, information. Definitely. But um, yes, Keep, stay safe, stay sane. So important for our health and hope to see you all again soon, sometime in the future, maybe in person, maybe here on the interwebs. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. My pleasure.